So my grandma likes to tell a story about how when my mom was a kid, she decided to throw my mom a surprise birthday party. So my grandma asked all of my mom's friends to come over after school and hide in the house. And when mom got there, they all shouted, surprise! But instead of getting excited and trying to open the presents and eat the cake, my grandma says my mom's face went blank. And she started breathing in and out really, really quickly. And she ran down the hall, slammed the door, and wouldn't come out of the bathroom. And my grandma tried for 20 minutes to get her out of the bathroom, and the only thing that worked was saying, all of these people outside have presents for you. So that finally worked. And then years later, my mom was getting ready to go to college. And her idea is that she wanted to live at home and go to the local university. But my grandparents actually pretty much forced her to go to a school four hours away. And my grandma likes to tell, and my mom doesn't like to have this told, that she cried the whole way to college. But my, my grandma always says after, we called her the next day and she was having the best time of her life. So throughout my mom's childhood, my grandparents were pretty much trying as hard as they could to push her out of the nest. But when I was a kid, my mom did pretty much everything she could to keep me in the nest. So my parents were kind of the escape hatch. If there was ever anything I was invited to do that I was scared of or I was worried about, they would help me come up with an excuse so I wouldn't have to do it. So for example, when my Girl Scout troop decided to hold a ski trip when I was nine, I spent a couple of days after it was announced worrying about, what if I go up on the mountain and I fall down and I break my leg? Or what if all the kids know how to ski and I don't know how to ski and they know that I don't know how to ski and they laugh at me? And so finally my mom said, just tell them you're busy that day. You don't have to go. And then a couple of years later, I got invited to a birthday party and the invitation had the ominous tagline of dress warmly. So I spent the whole weekend thinking, dress warmly? What are we going to do? Are we going to hike into the wilderness? What if, I, what if I get lost and I freeze to death? Or what if I don't know anyone there and nobody talks to me? That would be worse. And so my mom said, oh, just tell them we're going to visit family that day. You don't have to go. But years passed, and I was ready to go to college myself. And at that point, I had gotten to the point where instead of thinking about what could go wrong with something, I was more thinking about what could go right with it and wanting to try new things. So my list of colleges, I grew up in Ohio, and my list of prospective colleges included no colleges from Ohio, colleges that were as far away from Ohio as humanly possible. And my parents, they weren't really helicopter parents, they were more like tarmac parents, and did whatever they could to basically keep me in the state. So they first started, they attacked the, the schools from California and New York, they were saying, well, those are so far away, we might not be able to afford to fly you home at all the breaks, you could only come home for Christmas. And saying, they're private schools, you'll be in debt until you're 52 if you go there. And, but I kept, I kept going and I kept insisting I'm not going to school in Ohio. I don't care that the school 20 minutes away has a great journalism program. I don't care that you want me to live 15 minutes, live at home so I can go to school 15 minutes away and save money. So I went to school about two hours away and yes, I'm in debt and probably will be in debt until I'm 52, so they're right about that. But after I was ready, when I was ready to graduate, my mom had this great plan about what I was gonna do. She said, why don't you work for the local newspaper? You could live at home and save money. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. And I was like, well, no, that wouldn't be great. And so I moved about eight hours away to upstate New York. And since then, I've lived in Florida. I've lived in Indiana. And now I live in Delaware, which is 12 hours away from my parents. But my mom still keeps the hope alive that I will someday move back so when I go visit, if I'm saying, you know, I'm going to go visit this friend and that friend, she does the classic mom guilt trip of, you don't want to spend time with us? We never see you. And there was even a time a couple years ago where I almost, I was offered a job in Cincinnati. And suddenly my mom was like looking on Craigslist and sending me apartment ads. I didn't even know she knew what Craigslist was, but she must have learned so she could try to get me to move back. But unfortunately for her, I did not. And... I guess there's not really an end to this story. I mean, maybe I'll want to move back someday, but I think the real end will come when I have a daughter and I throw her a birthday party as a surprise, and we'll see what happens. Thank you.